The year was 2017, February 2017. The anticipation and hype for the live-action Beauty and the Beast film was growing, as it was to be released within the next month and was to be the first Disney live-action remake to be a full-on musical, and we were so curious and excited to see how those musical numbers would translate into a real-life big-budget blockbuster with Hermione Granger herself, Emma Watson, stepping into the role of Belle, which seemed fitting at the time. Uh, there were concerns and some hesitations, but the general consensus was that Disney was two for two with their recent straightforward live-action adaptations, as both Cinderella and The Jungle Book received positive critic and audience reactions. It's hard to believe, but it was a time where traditional, faithful adaptations were somewhat refreshing. Because before Cinderella had decided to remain true to the story, the only live-action films that were being made by Disney were twists on the original stories. 2014's Maleficent wasn't so much an origin story of a beloved Disney villain, as it was a complete twist on Sleeping Beauty that contradicted the story and characters. And people don't like being told that their childhood was a lie by the same studio that provided them the original movie. And before that, 2010's Alice in Wonderland was also received with mixed reactions, as it ignored all the iconography of the original animated film, took on a much darker tone, and replaced the delightfully nonsensical story with a generic hero's journey tale. So, while the films were majorly profitable, lots of people were turned off by their revisionist approaches to the beloved properties. And that's why when Cinderella came along in 2015 and was surprisingly traditionalist in its approach, fleshing out the classic story instead of contradicting or changing it and embracing the old school Disney magic instead of trying to be darker and edgier, people responded warmly to it, and it was a refreshing change of pace for Disney. And then a year later, The Jungle Book came along. And since the original film is a lot looser and more episodic in its structure than other Disney animated movies, there was plenty of room to expand upon the blueprint of it and deliver all the iconic moments that we remember while offering plenty of new material. It was absolutely reverent to the animated film while still paving its own path. So, the two faithful adaptations Disney produced were well received, while the revisionist live-action films had more mixed reception. And yeah, the other faithful, straightforward Disney live-action remake was 101 Dalmatians, but that came out in 1996 and was not associated with the modern wave of live-action Disney films. So there we were in February 2017, fairly confident that Disney was on the right path in celebrating the legacy of their beloved iconic animated catalog through big, eventful live-action films that had respect for what came before and acted as more nuanced companion pieces to them, giving you the option to view a classic in a different medium that came along with adjustments and expansions to fit said medium. The same way we can experience the same Disney stories on stage or in a storybook. But we had not yet seen what was to come. We hadn't seen the lifeless plagiarism of 2019's Lion King. We hadn't seen the baffling, hollow, atrocious mishandling of 2020's Mulan. We hadn't seen the misguided, sanitized, cheap pointlessness of 2022's Pinocchio. We hadn't yet known that the initial promise of these live-action adaptations would lead to mostly misfires, even greater than the likes of Alice in Wonderland and Maleficent. If we were to go by the success of Cinderella and The Jungle Book and the hype of Beauty and the Beast, we had very little reason to believe Disney would churn out adaptations that completely misunderstood the strengths of their animated counterparts and settled for completely hollow, soulless imitations of them. The remakes were to become replicas of the animated movies but with the artistry and the life sucked out of them. And then the ones that did stray into their own territory, like Dumbo and Mulan, didn't know how to match the power of the animated versions in their own way and made baffling creative decisions on top of the hollowness. In March 2017, 
Beauty and the Beast was released, and there was plenty of criticism, mostly revolving around the many pointless additions that never amounted to anything, the characterization of the Beast, the way the film stuck so close to the original without ever matching its power, and the casting of Emma Watson, who sounds like a great choice for Belle on paper, but in actuality, doesn't possess the charisma of the character and is not a singer. But despite all the criticism, the blueprint for Disney's Beauty and the Beast is so strong and the nostalgia is so palpable that to even see it brought to life in a half-assed mediocre way with some nice production design is enough to sweep people away and I am admittedly one of the people who found this film enchanting, despite its many flaws, and the general reaction was for the most part moderately positive, and the box office was enormous, all because of the power of the original animated film. And this was the turning point for the live action remakes. Disney could get away with recycling the animated films without putting in nearly as much effort, heart, passion, artistry, etc. as long as they hit the essential beats and offered nostalgia. Except for the case of Mulan, where they tacked on brief, unearned references to the animated film to remind you of a substantially better way to tell the story. Okay, so I don't inherently think live-action adaptations of animated films are a bad thing, as many claim, and that's why I try to reserve my opinions on them until I actually see footage. I think it's a much more nuanced discussion than people like to make it out to be, and it's not as black and white. The statement that Hollywood has run out of ideas is more unoriginal than the remakes themselves. Hollywood has always been adapting and remaking and retelling well-known stories from the very beginning. Walt Disney himself was not telling original stories but using famous fairy tales and books to apply his groundbreaking animation techniques to. He even made earlier versions of stories like Cinderella and Alice in Wonderland before he gave us the definitive feature film versions we all know and love. So he was retelling stories he already told. The Walt Disney Company was built on familiar stories, utilizing the latest technology and sensibilities of the time to tell them. Yes, original films are very important, but... I bet most of your favorite films are based on books, or other movies, or other pre-existing material. There's room for both familiar and original content, and if you want big studios like Disney to deliver more original stories, then you better show up for them because the film industry is a business and it's only logical for them to produce content that is guaranteed to make money. Which is why it's also annoying when people say certain films are cash grabs, when every film is a cash grab. Every movie studio has to be driven by profit or else they'd go under. That's the reality of capitalism. Movie studios are not fueled by creative or artistic integrity as we would all like them to be. And there are plenty of original films being made, so I recommend you go find them and watch them. So yeah, the Disney live action remakes are not awful by nature. It's about the execution and the approach. And in that approach, is it a quality product that offers more than just nostalgia? Does it have respect for the original animation and its legacy while still carving out its own path? Is it a companion piece that harmoniously coexists with and celebrates the original animation, or does it serve as a replacement for it? Even if the intention was to replace the animated film, the animated film will always exist, so it can't erase it. Uh, so yeah, I think if executed properly and thoughtfully and skillfully, a live action remake can work, and when it does work, it's a glorious feeling unlike any other because, like it or not, nostalgia is a very necessary feeling to access, and experiencing something you love in a big, grand, new way isn't just fun. It has the potential to offer a special kind of feeling that can't be accessed in any other way. I love the original animated Mulan, and I was greatly disappointed that the live action film was such a failure because I think bringing those beloved elements to life, like Mushu the dragon and the reflection sequence, etc., 
could be something really cool to experience and i really wanted to experience it and though i didn't get to experience that i can always look back on the animated film and envision in my head what it might look like in the real world but i'd still like to see it so the problem with these remakes is not necessarily the concept of them or their general existence but the pattern that they've seemed to have fallen under the soulless, lifeless, artless pattern that most of the films unfortunately follow, so while I'll continue watching with an open mind, I can't help but be a bit hesitant about the quality of every live action remake that is announced, and I'm even more hesitant about the fact that they're starting to announce films that are based on very recent animations, which I definitely think need more breathing room before being remade. I thought the announcement of Lilo and Stitch was a bit too soon, but the recent talks of a live-action Princess and the Frog movie have me scratching my head. I mean, that movie could benefit from a redo that doesn't make Princess Tiana a frog throughout the runtime, but if they took that approach, wouldn't it be servicing as a replacement of the animated film rather than a companion? So, while I do have an open mind about Disney live-action adaptations, and there are plenty of animated films I'd love to see come to life, Disney's track record doesn't have me enthusiastic about them, or at least not as much as I should be. And that's why I think Disney should stop doing live-action remakes of their animated catalog, and instead make live-action films that include the iconic characters without retelling their stories. Disney could create new stories with the beloved characters at the forefront. They could be sequels to the original animated films, but in live action. They could be spin-offs, they could be prequels, crossover stories, we could get a Kingdom Hearts movie. I think there's endless potential in bringing to life these culturally significant characters that represent the Disney company without trapping them in their original stories. You could still include some of that beloved music, and even still recreate some of the most iconic moments in live action through opening credit sequences, and recaps, and flashbacks. But it's just bizarre that such recognizable characters have only really appeared inside their original stories, with a few exceptions and a couple of direct-to-video sequels. In this way, it'd be easier to view Disney live-action films in the same way you'd view a Marvel film. This way, Disney isn't risking the chance of disappointing people with subpar recreations. They wouldn't be at risk of criticism for messing up moments that are so special to so many people, and they wouldn't be at risk of criticism for leaving out or changing certain elements within the story, because they'd be new stories with characters we love in the flesh. This way, it wouldn't be so weird to see Tiana in a live-action movie when the original Princess and the Frog was released somewhat recently. We could see Anna and Elsa and Moana and Rapunzel in movies without having to remake movies that are relatively new. And I guess this would be one of their only options once they're finished remaking their entire catalog. And the thing is, there have been sequels and spin-offs announced for Disney live-action films like The Jungle Book, Beauty and the Beast, and Aladdin, but it seems as if none of those projects are going to come to fruition. The only one actively in development is the prequel to the live-action Lion King, titled Mufasa, which could serve as a prequel to the animated Lion King as well, since that and the 2019 movie are basically the same movie, so I don't know why they didn't make this prequel in the first place instead of the 2019 Lion King because we'd still get the same characters just in a new story. And once again, there are still ways to incorporate iconic songs and moments into the sequels, prequels, and spin-offs, and it'd actually be cool to get reprises to beloved songs with new lyrics. Surprisingly, the only live-action adaptations that did receive sequels were Maleficent and Alice in Wonderland, and I wouldn't even include those in the group because they're something different. So, yeah, Disney maybe hold off on the Princess and the Frog remake and give us a new live-action movie with a new story with Tiana at the center. You can still do that without remaking the movie. Okay, that is 
all I have to say, but I want to know your thoughts on my thoughts, and, um, bye!